3.330, that's the frequency for CHU. Each one of those tick marks after the 3.3 is 20. So it's 3.3, 20, 40, 60, 80, 3.4. So halfway between the first and second tick mark is 3.3. 3.33, which is exactly what we're on. Okay? You can't beat that. We all know what that is. Look at that. All right, let's go up one band. 48.40. There was a series of strikes by Ukraine in recent weeks that have severely damaged Russian vessels and the fleet's headquarters. James Heppy, UK Minister of State for Armed Forces. So that the dispersal tick mark after 4.8 is 4.85. He said this at a conference. So technically, it looks, looks like we're one lines with. I mean, we're less than a lines with off there. Let's keep going. Look at that. All right, let's go up one more band. To 10. Oh my God, we're a lines width off. I'm going to throw this piece of shit radio in the garbage now. Dang it. Yeah, right. And if it wasn't 9.30 at night here in Dallas, I could go up another band and get 20. All right? Yeah. This thing rocks. So just an update. If you watched my last video, so I got the radio, some of the dial line was a little weird, some of the tubes were, I mean, there was a little bit of instability on sideband, and then, so what happened was I read the manual, okay, the whole dang thing, and the manual says there should be two tubes that stay powered when the radio is off, but still plugged in so that it like powers the clock and it keeps the oscillator warm so it's ready to go when you turn the radio on. Well, I only noticed out of all the tubes in there, one tube was glowing. So I'm like, okay, maybe I got a weak tube. Well, then I read, I kept reading the manual and then, and then regarding my little instability or whatever you call it issue for on sideband, the manual says, well, it could be one of two tubes, possibly two tubes, uh, that affect uh, the sideband instability issue and maybe a weak or weaker upper band. I, I, I can't remember. It was three or four days ago and I read the whole thing. But anyway, I said, you know what? So I bought a tube kit on eBay. Got here really fast. So complete set of tubes, new old stock, advertised as new old stock. So I think I did a video where I put them all in and I showed you guys the radio out of the chassis. I put all the tubes in, and the alignment was a little weird. It was different than it was. All right, so all I did was change the tubes. Oh, I also cleaned the band switch, so I got the top The top band was not working all the time. And I cleaned the band switch, and now it does. And then, uh, but the alignment was a little weird, so, but I had left one of the tubes out. And so I put the last tube in, 
and the alignment got a little better. Then uh, I put the radio back in its chassis, okay, back in the case. And I remounted it back in my room here. And I let the radio run for about four hours. And I came in and I turned it on. Well, I didn't have to, it was already on. And I checked it. And this is what you're getting. It's like nearly perfect. It's nearly textbook perfect. All right. And I, I, it's like, okay. I changed the tubes and cleaned the band switch. And I remounted the radio chassis back in the cabinet. And this, and it's all money. And you're seeing how sensitive it is too. I th oh, I also did a video where I was getting 20 megahertz WWV at 7.30 at night um, versus an ICOM 705. And uh, uh, this thing was kicking ass on an ICOM. But anyway, this radio is running awesome. Literally awesome. I am so happy with it. The performance, the alignment, it's a little bit off at 15 megahertz. If you remember the very first video, we're on this side of the um, uh, of the mark. and But since I put changed the tubes, that error was cut in half. So it's still to the right. Um, and I'd like, I'd prefer that to be a little bit better. But dude, beggars can't be choosers. And I, I ain't going in there with screwdrivers and twisting those little things to realign this. No way. All right. So anyway, this thing's working great. I got my little weak beacon, 28.209, all that stuff. Okay. So, but anyway, I just want to do this final video to show you how great this thing is running. Oh, let's do, a, since we're right here in the middle of 49 meters, let's do it real quick. So, well, here, let's look at this first. So you got WWE at five. Now, there's a signal at 5.010. Look at that. Not even a line thickness apart, and it's bringing it in, separating the two signals, everything. Perfect. There's another signal at 5.025. There's another, uh, the new WRMI is at 5.05. .05. Right there. Awesome. And then 49 meters goes 5.8. Up to 6.2. So there's usually a 5.8. There's a 5.85. There's a 5.9. 5.85. I think. And sometimes I think there's a 5.935 and a 5.950. There's 5.935. 5.950. Look at that. Right on the mark. And Cuba's at six, but their transformer's always messed up. See? You get a carrier and some fluttering. Radio Marti, 6.03. Look at that. Canada, and I, again, I forget if it's Montreal or Toronto, is 6.07. There you go. And then... Sometimes there's some stuff above this. That's 105, 6.105. 6.160. And that, that's 80 and 85. Check that out. There's 85. 85. Let's use the band spread. There's 80. 
check that out. And I'm on wide band with two 6 kilohertz. This radio is so cool. All right. Anybody want a free ICOM 9500? Come on over. It'll probably be out in the trash. I just don't need it anymore. All right. I got this. All right. Thanks for hanging out.